Hello, my esteem is this one's economic student. You are highly welcome to this economic class. The topic today is channels of distribution. Channels of distribution. Under this topic, we are going to define channels of distribution, explain process of distribution, Equally, we see the functions which the wholesaler performs to the manufacturer. And lastly, the functions which the wholesaler performs to the retailer. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to define channels of distribution, explain for process involved, explain for processes involved in distribution. You'll be able to state five functions of a wholesaler to the manufacturer and, of course, five functions of the wholesaler to the retailer. Let's get started. Definition of channels of distribution. Definition of channels of distribution. Channels of distribution refer to the various stages through which finished goods are moved from the manufacturers, that is the producer, to the final consumers. Channels of distribution refers to the various stages through which finished goods are moved from the manufacturers or producers to the final consumers. Channel of distribution. Channels of distribution is also known as chain of distribution. Channels of distribution is also known as chain of distribution. Now let's demonstrate these channels. Let's see the chain. We have the manufacturer at the top producing the goods. We have the wholesaler following the manufacturer who buys in large quantity from different manufacturers, store them in the warehouse for the retailers. We have the retailer at the third position buying from the wholesalers varieties of products and then we have the final consumers who buys in bits. We have the final consumers who buy in bits from the retailers. Let's take a look at the process of distribution. What does it involve? What does it involve? This involves all human and physical means which aid the smooth transfer of goods from the manufacturer to the final consumers. Those human factors and the physical factors that help goods to be transferred from the manufacturer to the final consumers. This means Ah, middlemen, transportation, advertisement, and warehousing. Middlemen, transportation, advertisement, and warehousing. We are going to take them one after the other. Middlemen. The middlemen or agents are the human elements involved in the distribution of goods from the manufacturer to the final consumers. These are human beings that are involved in transfer, delivery of goods from the manufacturer to the final consumers. No, the middlemen involve the middlemen involve the wholesalers and the retailers. So the two of them constitutes the middlemen. Transportation. This refers to the medium through which the finished goods are moved by air, land, water, pipelines, etc. from the manufacturer to the final consumers. So when goods are conveyed by figures, land, when they are conveyed by ship, canoes, etc., by water, when they are conveyed by airplanes from A, and maybe by pipelines 
in the case of our produce so this means of transferring goods are what is known as transportation advertisement by advertising we mean the process of creating awareness in the minds of the public about the existence of a product process of creating awareness in the minds of the public about the existence of a product it could be through radio jingles it could be through radio adverts it could be through television it could be through newspapers it could be through magazines i believe you've seen your view one adverts or the other today in your television or you must have heard one adverts over the radio or you must have read one your newspaper now let's look at the food process of distribution way housing way housing this is the process which ensures that goods produced are stored until they are needed the process of storing goods in safe place till when they are needed now, the actual place where this good are stored is what is known as a warehouse. And the process of storing this good, every activity involved in it, is known as what? Warehousing. The major aim is to ensure that goods are provided in good quality and quantity to all the consumers in steady supply. Let us now move forward and take a good discussion of the wholesaler. Here we're going to see the meaning of the wholesaler, we're going to know who he is, and we're going to see the functions he performs to both the manufacturer and the retailer. Meaning of wholesaler. A wholesaler is a merchant who purchases goods in large quantities from the manufacturer and sells in small quantities to the retailer. His duty is not to produce. He might not consume. All he does is to buy the goods from the manufacturer in large quantity and break the bulk, selling in smaller quantities to the retailer. Let's look at his function to the manufacturer functions of the wholesaler to the manufacturer number one bulk breaking of goods it is the primary duty of the wholesaler to buy goods in large quantity store them in his warehouse and then sell it in smaller quantities to the retailer he can buy from different producers store them at the end he will now break the bulk selling in smaller quantities to the retailer this is his major duty another function is financing of production through prompt payments now a wholesaler can do a whole lot to finance production by paying the producers on time if you make timely payments to producers that means the producers will always have a lot of fun to go about producing the required quantity of goods by the society. Third function, provision of transport needed in distribution. It is the duty of the wholesaler to go about to different producers with his own delivery fan to convey goods, to buy goods from them, take them back to his own warehouse or store. So in this way, he's helping the producer to transport those goods free of charge to those in need of the good. So he provides transport facilities to the producer. Another one is that he prevents price fluctuation, prevention of price fluctuation. Now by the time the wholesaler stock a whole lot of goods, for a certain time period it is possible that the prices of such goods might go up or might fall now if the price falls he will bear the risk 
of the fall in price on behalf of the producer. So he prevents the fluctuation in price, which will really affect the producer's production level. Now, another function is in terms of information dissemination. Since the wholesaler is dealing with the retailer and the customers who are actually the ones using the goods, he will be able to hear a lot about the, the positive aspects and the negative aspects. So he will be able to communicate effective information, timely information, appropriate information to the producers, which will help the producers to review their method of production, their quality, their packaging, and everything about the goods in order to come up with a better product for the whole society. Another function of the wholesaler to the manufacturer is in terms of credit facilities. He provides credit facilities to the manufacturers, especially by engaging in upfront payments for the product. By upfront payments, we mean a situation where the wholesalers pay in advance for the goods. They now pay the producers, okay, take this two million, produce certain quantity of goods. Once you're done, call me, let me come and pick them. Upfront payment. That really helps the producers to get a lot of great facilities to carry that production to the extent of the market demand. Another function which it performs to the manufacturer is in terms of warehousing. He provides warehousing facilities to the producers. By the time the wholesaler builds a place, well ventilated, enough light, good temperature for the goods to last the taste of time. And now buys a lot of good and, good and stock it there. That means it's helping the producer to convey the finished product from the factory so that there will be more space for the producers to produce more goods. If this is not done by the wholesaler, that means they will be stockpiling at the production level. What is stockpiling? A situation whereby the producers store more goods in the factory that they may not have enough space to produce more goods again. So those are the functions of the wholesaler to the manufacturer. Now let's turn around and look at the functions of the wholesaler to the retailer. What are those functions which the wholesaler performs to the retailer? One, provision of varieties of goods. Provision of varieties of goods. The wholesaler buys goods from different producers in large quantities, stock them in a safe place. Now the retailers will now go to the wholesaler pick goods from this company, pick another, uh, goods from another company, pick from another company. At the end of the day, they will buy varieties of goods from one wholesaler. That means that the wholesaler is able to provide different varieties of products to the retailer. That will minimize the cost of the retail mo retailer moving from one company to another to buy goods. That's the major function. Another function is provision of greatest facilities. You know, most times, especially in the villages, the retailers are often very poor. Sometimes they may not have enough money to pay for the goods they want to purchase at once. So it is the duty of the wholesaler to sell those goods on credit. Okay, oh, since you're interested in 200 quantities of my products, take them by next week. I believe by next week we finish selling, I'll come, you pay me my money, I'll give you another one. Like that, it provides credit facilities to the retailer. Another interesting function is in terms of advice. He advises the retailer. Because he's dealing with the producers of the products and he's having his part knowledge about the usage, about the installation, about the maintenance, Another aspect of the product, you'll be able to advise the wholesaler on how to go about using the product effectively and even how to sell the product to 
the final consumers. So in this way, he will provide advice services to the retailer. Another function is making availability, making available of small quantities of good. It makes good available to the to the, the retailer in smaller quantity. You know, if the retailer were to be allowed to go to the factory to buy those goods, sometimes they may not be able to afford the transport. And if they can afford the transport, they may not be able to buy the quota, the minimum quota, which the manufacturers would like to sell at the point of production. So the wholesaler buys them in bulk and help them by selling them in smaller quantities to the retailer. That is another major function which the wholesaler performs to the retailer. Another function is transportation. Transportation. The wholesaler provides transport facilities to the retailers by conveying those goods, the retailers buy to their different shops free of charge. This is common among the wholesalers. They use their delivery fund, convey the goods bought by their customers, of course, the retailers, to their different shops free of charge. Another function is risk bearing. Risk bearing. The wholesaler bears the risk of a fall in price on behalf of the retailer. By the time they store varieties of goods, who knows what will happen within the time period. The, good, the price of such goods might decrease. If there is a fall in price, that means that he is going to bear the risk of that fall in price because the retailers will not buy them at the initial price again. They will buy it at the current price. So you, the wholesaler will stand a chance of losing his money. That's risk bearing, which is a major function of the wholesaler to the retailer. Now let's look at the last function for today we're going to see in terms of advertisement. Advertising. The wholesaler carries out advertising and sales promotion on behalf of the retailer. Now by the time the wholesaler goes around to make adverts about the goods, to do sales promotion so that the people in the society would have a greater demand for the products, this will be to the benefit of the retailer. Now the retailers will have more customers as a result of such sales promotions and advertisement. And who actually started this? The wholesaler. So he's helping the retailer in terms of advertisement. These are the functions of the wholesaler, both to the manufacturer and the retailer. So far, we've seen the channels of distribution as the mean, as the stages to which goes most from the manufacturer to the final consumer. The chain is this way. The manufacturer at the top, the wholesaler coming below, the retailer on third position, and the final consumers at the bottom. We've seen the process of distribution, middlemen, transportation, advertisement, and warehousing. And of course, we've seen the wholesaler as an intermediary between the producer and the retailer performing so many functions to both the producer and the retailer. In our next class, we are going to look at the retailer, the functions the retailer performs to both the ogre on top, that's the wholesaler, and the ones below, that's the final consumers. Until then, I remain your economics teacher, Declan Anibid, wishing you the best in your studies. Stay safe and bye for now.